Hello fellow haters of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to a very special episode because in this episode I will teach you how to paint red NMM and if you know something about NMM you know that red NMM is the holy grail of NMM because it's by far the hardest one to master and I think they have a recipe that works really well all the time so let's get cracking So as you can see, I have all my base code of the red already applied, and it's a 50-50 mix of Ibsen Scarlet and Mephisto Red. And now I'm going to sketch my first highlight. For this, I'm going to use a Squick Orange, and I'm going to use a sort of like a thin, thin layer. Try to think of four sources of light. I'm not very concerned about uh, transitions now. This is not the point now, so. I just want to sketch my highlights and have them defined. So, back there. A block here. So that would be the highlights caused by this light coming from here, but of course there are also highlights coming from this side. So for those I'm going to do them just in the same way. With the highlights now sketched, I'm going to go back into my base code. This is a 50 50 mix of Mephiston Red and even some Scarlet, and I'm thinning it down to a glaze consistency. You can see how thin it is there. And I'm going to apply this glaze into the transitions. I'm moving it from the squid orange into the base code. You can see how I move my brush in that direction. That first pass is now dry here, and you can see how it's starting to smooth the transition down. And I will just keep applying this until I am happy with how it looks. My transitions are now a bit more smooth, but as you can see, they have a shrinked in size and they are not perfect. So to make them perfect, I'm going to make a glaze out of a squeak orange. You can see how thin my squeak orange is. And I'm going to apply this in the opposite direction, starting from the base code mix and moving it into the a squeak orange bit. With my first highlight now established, and I'm quite happy with it, I'm going to move into doing all the shadows. I'm going to start with corn red, and I will just do a kind of a heavy glaze. You can see the consistency 
here. And I will apply this into all the areas that I want to have a shadow. As always, I'm glazing this in the direction that I want the shadows to go. So in this case, I'm starting in the base coat and moving just right into the shadow. The first glaze is now dry and I will apply the second one. With my first shadow now established, I'm going to move into the second one. This will be a one-to-one -one mix of corn red and black. And again, I'm thinning this down to a very thin glaze consistency. You can see how thin that is there. You need to be very careful with this shade because it dries really dark. And I will apply this covering less area than our previous. Don't forget to also apply this in all the recesses of the armor, around all the rivets. That shadow with the, with the one-to-one -one mix of corn, red and, and black is now done. And I'm going to move into the very last shadow. This is pure black and I will use this just as a recess shade. So I will go in between panels, I will pick up rivets and define all the shapes with pure black. With all the shading now done, I'm going to move into finishing off the highlights. This is a one-to-one -one mix of Wild Rider Red and White, and I will apply this as a second highlight. Again, I'm glazing it towards the areas that I want to be, to have more highlight. With this, I would also pick the rivets.
With my highlights almost finished, this seems like a good time to start doing secondary reflections so I can highlight them and finish it, and finish this all at the same time. So I'm going back into my base code. This is a one-to-one -one mix of Mephiston Red and Ibsen Scarlet. And I will just start doing secondary re reflections with this. What are those? Well, imagine light bouncing from other objects because it's metal. So I will take the deepest shadows and just do lines with this where I imagine light bouncing off. With my secondary reflections started, I'm going to jump straight into the one-to-one -one Wild Rider and White mix, and I will highlight those secondary reflections. So there, for example, can you see how much of a change the death makes? Makes it look really reflecting. With those secondary reflections now established and looking good, I'm going to move into the next highlight. This is Luganaf Orange, and I will use it as a very extreme highlight. Again, this is thinned down into a glaze consistency. You want to edge highlight this taking less area than before, of course, but also Oops. also glaze this into the main panels. and place a highlight of this into the secondary reflections.
that last highlight is, is now done. And then going to apply a filter using a Blood Angels Red, thin down with Lamium Medium. And this is really thin. Don't know if you can see how thin this is. And I'm going to apply this over all our armor. I don't want this to pull anywhere, I just want to reapply a little bit of saturation into our paint job. And as a final step on our red armor, I'm going to apply highlights with pure white. This will be, of course, very controlled, just as very small dots and glints of light. And with that last step done, the red armor is finished. I, of course, took the liberty to finish the whole model so you could see the red armor along with the other colors and not just in isolation. And let me tell you, I'm really proud and really happy with this one. It was a bit of a challenge, but one of those things that once you have done with it, you are just very proud. So let me show it to you all around. So if you're following this guide and want to paint something similar, you can get an idea of where to put the lights on. So cue the music. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check my, all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. And now I also have merch that should be appearing below this video or you can check the shop tab on my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you prefer to not use Patreon, you can just click join below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for generosity. As I said guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Ben Morin, Daniel Figueiredo, Gerald Moore, Kieran Murthyre, Victor Domen, Michael Boye, Charles Armitage, Christoph Moret, Joshua Bohannon, Ryan Mann, Bell Drain, Kevin Sulas, Leonard Lindemann, Jonathan Ekelun, Dr. V, G Force, Eldrick Edge, Sasha Park, JT Butler, Manuel Villela Partida, Josh Simpson, Dominic Trevizo, Richard Kierkowski, Mark Jarvis, Gareth Smith, Vilkas Ward, Matteo de Rienzo, Andrew Palka, Patrick Ketsitsis, Aaron Dell, Alex Agelakis, and Notius Maximus for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks, you're my patron, and take control.